everyone, and welcome back to Batman Arkham Asylum on Steam. I am One Wild Sheep yet again, to ladies and gentlemen, and today we are going to be going to that big old tower over there that we've already been to previously, because now we're getting around to the last stretch of the game, ladies and gentlemen. We are on the last stretch. we got a bit more to go, and, uh, like, we got we got more than four parts left to go. I'm saying that much, but, you know, we're getting close to the end, folks. And uh, what we have to deal with now are these new piranha plant enemy types that Luigi himself has uh, them Vietnam flashbacks about. And the big deal with these things are, well, obviously we still have the lunatics running around, but the thing about these things are they throw fireball energy plasma things at you whilst you are traversing the area. So what I sort of recommend is try and dodge them, try and keep out of their way as much as possible. Or if you're like me and you have the urge to kill some weeds, run up to them and push the A button and Batman will punch them right in their old gob, which will hurt them, I suppose. It would knock them out and kill them. You can't kill any of these plants permanently. However, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you reset into an area, you know, the plants will respawn as well, which is a bit annoying, all things considered. But as you can tell, the inside of this place got sure got uh, it sure it sure had it sure it sure messed up in comparison to the last time we came here, isn't it? And you see all that mystical gas on the floor there. Well, that kind of acts like the gas in the old Spider-Man PS1 game. If you go down into that gas, well, you will. One, well, you want. You won't die, but uh, you basically won't be able to traverse the environment down there. You need to go around and find your own way around the gas. For example, making use of our newly obtained, and obtained just in time, I might add, line launcher ability, which will allow us to go from side to side in each of these rooms. What can I say? But yeah, a big part of this, um, going through this area now is just finding out where's a good place to grapple from point A to point B. Where's a good... Basically, you just need to keep an eye out for open areas that you will be able to uh, line yourself across. However, do be a little bit careful because if you clip onto one of the plants that are in between the two walkways to the left and right side of the room, then you will clip them and you will fall down into the poisonous gas pit below, which ultimately results in a minor inconvenience, in which case you need to redo it again because, oh, the challenge, meh. But, you know, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. It's a neat little change of pace for this particular stage. However, now we're coming up to this area, so we'll just have a little chat with that Aaron Cash yet again. Batman. I figured you'd be here about now. What's the deal with the plants? It's complicated. Let me guess. Poison Ivy. She teamed up with Joker. All that matters is that I can stop the plants taking over the island, but... There's always a but, isn't there? Where do you keep Killer Croc? I found a door in the sewers, but it's sealed shut. That monster's got his own special cell. It's right below the transfer room back in intensive treatment. Elevator goes right down to an old sewer. You just drop meat down there every day or so and try to forget about it. It's locked off. More security than the Joker. You won't get in without the Warden's permission. He has the codes. Thanks, Cash. Stay here and do not go near the plants. They'll kill you. Oh boy, I can vouch for him here. When I went to deal with those type of evil killer banana plants, oh no, they gave Ouija a bit of a duffle. Oh, I lost a many a power up to one of them plants, I tell you that much. Oh boy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically this entire part is going to basically revolve around us backtracking to basically one of the earliest areas of the game that we entered. And we basically need to backtrack to one of these earlier areas and... Um, do another stealth sequence and find our way across to Killer Croc's lair, which we actually had a tiny preview of at a previous point. Remember when we were inside that uh, little service tunnel and there was this one door that Killer Croc popped out of nowhere and he just sort of punched the door like, Nope, you're not getting in here. And rightfully so, I noped all the way the opposite way to that door. Well, basically, that's where we're going. However, we'll have to take an alternate entrance into that because obviously that door is locked from the inside, which is... Uh, Honestly, it's no big deal, it just mean well, it doesn't even mean more backtracking, really, now that I think about it, because it's about the same length 
travel length to go both either back entrance or the front entrance of Killer Croc's lair, so I don't know. But yeah, we just basically need to go straight to the center of Markham Island through intensive treatment, which is way over yonder. So yeah, there's not much going on in this part, I'll be perfectly honest. It's just literally me traversing back to the previous areas, and it's around the tail end of the game, around this point in the game, where it, it sort of feels like, at least to me, the game designers sort of got, des they sort of got fed up. Like, a lot of this end game stuff just feels like extra padding to the course of the game, primarily because we're going back to old areas, they've slightly changed the old areas up. But they, they don't really do anything too interesting with the who poison that AP takeover thing. It's a really it's a really missed opportunity in my opinion to have like very specific traversing puzzles. Like Seriously, the only major traversing puzzle that's changed thanks to uh, Poison Ivy's thing is the layout of the gardens have changed slightly. And that one clock tower has like one line launcher sequence. Otherwise, they haven't really done much to change things up, which, I don't know, it just, it just sort of irks me the wrong way. I, I appreciate they tried to change things up instead of ending the game this early, because you know, it's this, otherwise it'd be considered by, probably by many, be a pretty short game. Whoa, physics! Honestly, this game length would be perfect for me, however, just because, I don't know, it, the last few sequences we had to go through just feel unnecessary, like, we're going back to Killer Croc right now, and um, from what what I feel is, once we go back and deal with Killer Croc, that's all we really needed. You know, in my opinion, that's all we really need, and we should have been able to go straight to the final boss, but I don't know. Like, this whole Poison Ivy situation, it's just a massive missed opportunity. They could have done so much more, in my opinion. Ah, uh, but I digress. Anyway, in order to get to that sniper guard that is blocking the way into the intensive treatment area and the previous area of the game that we've been to beforehand, we will need to traverse around to one of the lookout towers where the snipers are usually located and make use of our brand new line launcher gadget in order to make our way across. Why am I not doing this right now? Because riddle me this, riddle me that, there's another riddle trophy. That I want to pick up, lickety splat. You know, I, I, it took me a little while to say that. And I, I, wanted, I wanted to make it rhyme, goddammit. Oh, the one well sheep is anything but inconsistent. Oh, bye. Well, I say that, but I, I'm really inconsistent. My opinions change like the weather. <laughs> For one thing. Like, one day, like, right now I'm... I'm saying they could have probably changed this up and then later down the line you probably think oh what's your opinions on this and they'll be completely different opinions that's one thing I always find on YouTube that a lot of people tend to get annoyed they, like I see people calling others hypocrites and whatnot because their opinions change but from in my from what I can tell in my experience you know opinions just change naturally over time why well, I've gone from loving Sonic 06 to hating Sonic 06 to loving it again <laughs> you know, folks. Like right now, I'm currently in a state of mind that I love the game primarily because it's one of those games that's just really easy to glitch up, and it's just good fun just figuring out how to do each glitch, how to manipulate the game in some way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I have this weird sense of accomplishment with Sonic 06. I, I, it's an awful, awful, awful game, but I can't stand. I can't help but love it for some reason. Plus that one cutscene where Silver kicks Shadow the Hedgehog in the head is the thing of legends. Ah, I can't wait to get to that LP. <laughs> It'll probably be years from now, but I cannot wait to get to that LP. Anyway, it's time to grab hold of this extra Riddler trophy right by here, which is honestly a really, 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 really easy one to pick up. In fact, I don't see anyone missing out on this one because it's literally right there. There's no riddle. There's no challenge to get to it. You just sort of go in the cage and oh, okay, cool. I got a big green glowing trophy. Oh, bye. Where's the L? The big green glowing trophy needs an L. And the L doesn't stand for loser. Oh, no. The L will stand for Ouija. Number one. Oh, bye. <laughs> I promise I'll stop with the Luigi voice now. <laughs> okay, I'll, I promise. I just can't help it. It's, it's so fun. It's so fun to do. I'm still telling you, there needs to be a mod that replaces Batman's voice with Luigi. I would be all over that. 
Have you planted the explosives yet? Dude! Razor's just finishing his off now. Good. Let's test him out. No! No, I'm still up! So now, ladies and gentlemen, you might remember this level area location thing from way, way, hey, 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 earlier on in the game when we first started this baby up. Well, now we got another stealth sequence in this area, and it's basically slightly harder than the original. Not much harder, slightly harder. Now we have to deal with mooks that have guns. Actually, I think they had guns in the first place, didn't they? Well, either way, we need to deal with these mooks that have the shock collars on at the very least, and they will attract each other. And now they've gotten smart. They decided, hang on, Batman's using these gargoyles all the time. This put explosives on those things. Which basically means you land on the gargoyle, and then you'll have literally about one to two seconds left. Oh god, you see me. You'll have literally a couple of seconds in order to break up. You know, jump off the gargoyle before it explodes on your tootsies, and you will be feeling a great deal of pain, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But all the same tactics that you could have used in the first, you know, your first time around here can work here as well. And uh, I tried to make use of these air vent things a lot better. And honestly, I think I do a pretty good job of handling this one, because I do get in a couple of tight spaces, but... Uh, you know, considering I'm awful at stealth, I'm quite pleased with my performance here, I'm gonna be honest. One thing I don't think I really show off in this game properly either, I can't remember if I do, is there is actually another takedown move that, I, that you can do when you're inside those grates. If you're inside one of these grates and you're crawling around and there's an enemy right above you, you can actually jump out of the grate to, do, to perform a stealth kill. Now this... It's very rare to come across being able to do, but, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just another way of stealth killing someone, you know, it's just another little tactic you could potentially have in the bag, if you know what the AI layouts and what have you are. But yeah, one of my biggest advices for this area is just uh, make use of your batarang. Your batarangs, in particular, this in this area in particular, are just, they're an asset. They're amazing things, and just, a, and like I said, these gargoyles have bombs on them. Always be in detective mode with these type of sections, folks. Trust me, it just makes things a great deal better. If you're not in detective mode in these sections, as much as a lot of people, me included, prefer to see the game with all its pretty graphics without the blue overlay on top. You know, it's, it's just better to do so, just for the sake of gameplay, just to make it easier for yourself. I'm still saying I really wish there was a way to turn, you know, turn on the... The features of detective mode, like what seeing through walls and whatnot, without having this stupid blue filter on there. I don't know. It just it always bugs me. Every single Batman game that I've played, you know, out of the Arkham series, has this. I, I haven't played Arkham Knight yet, but every single one I have played has this on there, and it bugs me in every single game. Arkham Oranges, it bugs me in Arkham City, it bugs me, and it bugs me here. It's kind, of, it's kind of one of the reasons why I actually picked up the PC version in the first place, to find out if there was a mod to disable it, but I haven't found one yet. I need to look that up at some point. Like, it's one of the best things about having PC versions, you can mod the game in most cases. Unless you have Arkham Knight and the game runs like, uh, absolute rubbish. But, uh, I digress, I digress. But anyway, this room is pretty much cleared, I believe, so if you remember, there's actually a control panel inside that room with the grates. So let's just pop on up, let's just mosey on up, and uh, let's hack it, shall we, with our crypto thingy. You do not believe how much I'm holding back the urge to go into a Luigi impression all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm mixing up. Oh, I'll go with a Sonic impression this time. Oh boy, we're about to hack this thing! Wow! Totally radical! Uh-oh, the blue bar is going... Gotta speed up! <laughs> uh, but yeah, when I did say in one of the previous parts, you had to look at the blinking lights, and the blinking lights will um, tell you whether the those things are about to explode or, explode or not. I was a bit wrong. I did correct myself in the video when the... Um, Using a little pop-up thing, but I might as well re-talk about it here. There's a little blue bar right underneath three green blinking lights. 
and when that goes down, that's when the thing time limit runs out. So, you know, just to correct myself, and just in case my little tool tip that popped up on the video isn't enough information for you guys. But I digress. Anyway, if we go up here, there is actually another Riddler riddle. Yeah, Riddler riddle that we can now obtain. So you see that one picture that of uh, Aaron Cash, Captain Hook, if you will. Just uh, scan it, and there we go. And yes, there is a reason why I called it Captain Hook, because he is basically Captain Bloody Hook. Did anyone catch the game last night? Oh no. No! Why? And they say Arkham or Arkham City Arkham Knight is a badly designed game. Ugh. Alright, well then, ladies and gentlemen, I'll catch you all next time when we find out what's going on with this game and fix this thing. So thank you all for watching, hope you all enjoyed, don't be sheepish people, I'll catch you all then. Bye!